ministers, the permanent secretaries, and head of departments and agencies whose efforts and collaboration have helped us accomplish this much. We have also successfully concluded some important businesses of parliament, like for example, the State of the Nation addresses and consistently considered and approved the annual national budget over the years. We have also considered and deliberated on several motions, personal explanations, matters of the day, ministerial statements, and other parliamentary matters. This is testimony to the fact that Parliament is the national forum for public consideration of issues of concern to our people. And on a significant mood and pride for this fifth legislature is the proliferation of parliamentary questions to honorable ministers for oral answers. Our records have revealed that not less than 150 questions were processed for each ordinary session compared to not more than 10 questions in the entire period of the fourth legislature. This is again unprecedented in the history of our parliamentary democracy as a legislative tool of holding government to account. This was highly symbolic, designed to demonstrate the mandate of the legislature as the people's representative, that is the people's parliament. As a parliament and office of the speaker, I have hosted several international parliamentary and other delegations from strategic partners in the international community, including, amongst others, high-level delegations from the People's Republic of China, the Republic of France, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Republic of Senegal, the Republic of Kenya, Commonwealth Parliamentary Association UK branch and the Africa branch, the International Republican Institute and International IDEA. These and other delegations have interacted with parliamentarians and staff as a component of parliamentary democracy in pursuit of our strategic objectives in bilateral and multilateral fora. Honorable members, I wish to enumerate some of the main strengths of our parliament as a handing over legacy to the next legislature, that is the sixth legislature. During our term, executive legislative relations have improved since the last elections in April 2017. This is illustrated by a constructive and cordial working relationship between the majority and minority leaders of the National Assembly. The National Assembly enjoys substantial support from development partners, including CPA and CPA UK, WFD, all UN systems in the Gambia, the International Republican Institute, Article 19, International Idea, TICA, and of course many others. The National Assembly is equally active in other parliamentary meetings such as ECOWAS, ACPEU, and the Pan-African Parliament, that is PAP. Several exchanges, for example, to Ghana, Sierra Leone, and the UK have also exposed honorable members and staff to contemporary parliamentary good practices. The 2017 elections saw a very high turnout, that is, sorry, turnover of new members, but a successful induction program was carried out with the assistance of international partners on the operations, practices, and procedures of the assembly. Given that elections traditionally result in a high turnover of members, a similar induction program is necessary for the sixth legislature. Honorable members, our friends from the media, will agree with me that the sittings of the National Assembly, that is including voting and the proceedings of committees, were open to the public. The media was granted unrestricted access to all proceedings. Despite limited ICT infrastructure, the audiovisual broadcasting infrastructure has been improved with live streaming of sittings of the National Assembly on all the Assembly digital media platforms, 
providing digital quality live broadcasts and a replay service that enabled users to watch, link, or to download videos of assembly proceedings. The National Assembly is also developing and populating a new website to be known as the assembly.gm. Though challenges remain, there is evidence that committees are becoming more assertive and effective when conducting oversight. Notably, the Standing Committee on Defense and Security provides oversight of the security sector and intelligence services, a sector which was a no-go area for preceding legislatures. This equally demonstrates that the security service is accountable to civil rule and authority. Honorable members, in accordance with the new standing orders, the procedures for budget and financial scrutiny have equally been strengthened. The Finance and Public Accounts Committee, that is FPAC, and the government must now agree to a protocol on the administrative arrangements for the scrutiny of the annual draft budget and other related budgetary matters. Furthermore, the ethical regime of the National Assembly has also been toughened. The new standing orders provide a mechanism to ensure transparency and responsibility for the conduct of parliamentary matters, including adherence to code of conduct and disclosure of interest. For example, Standing Order Clause 135 establishes the register of interest of members of the Assembly, which will be made available for public inspection. Honorable members, the excitement of our successes or achievements cannot distract us from our challenges. Parliament's role in scrutinizing the reports of government and public institutions, as well as the reporting of some committees have been challenging due to the overwhelming and competing workload of the legislature. As the saying goes, the work of parliament can never be exhausted. Hence the reasons why legacy reports are prepared and the next legislature will need to look critically and carefully at the issues and the challenges being faced by government entities. Parliament has a role to appraise the performance of government. The following are some of our key challenges. <clears throat> One, the infrastructure of parliament is inadequate. There is lack of office accommodation for both members and professional staff. There are limited meeting rooms, four meeting rooms for about 18 committees. There are a few technical challenges, including no media room or conference center. And I hope that the next speaker and parliament will engage our partners and, of course, government, Minister of Finance, to invest in a new annex building to cater for this infrastructural deficiency. Unfortunately, although my office tried to engage the assistance of the Turkish Agency for International Cooperation, that is TICA, on this matter, it did not yield in any success. This this is a project, as you all know, I dearly wish to have happened, and I also wish the next leadership of the National Assembly will take it up. On institutional matters, the existing professional staff are nonpartisan, and additional staff are being recruited to improve on the capacity. The Hansard unit is understaffed, but considerable effort is being made to clear the backlog in transcription. FPAC has the mandate to examine the audited accounts of government and the report of the Auditor General on these accounts. The Public Enterprises Committee that is SPEC provides oversight on state-owned enterprises. Both committees have inherited a backlog of unaudited accounts but attempts have been made to ensure that government institutions and state-owned enterprises are up to date with their audited accounts in a more timely and effective manner. The National Assembly Service is responsible for providing public education about the functions of the Assembly and its committees. Some initiatives have been undertaken 
For example, the recent Open Day Forum organized by the Office of the Clerk together with WFD Gambia serves as a public lecture for stakeholders on the working of Parliament. The Office of the Clerk has now institutionalized this as an annual event to better bring Parliament closer to the people. Honorable members, would we, we would be remiss if we fail to note with sadness the passing away of two honorable members and former clerk of this assembly during this legislative term. Honorable Demba Sov, former National Assembly member for Nyamina West, and Honorable Fakeba N.L. Kuli, former member for Kiang West, and Mr. Dudu C.M. Kebe, former clerk of the National Assembly. We remember these fine individuals and their contributions with affection and profound sense of loss. We pray that their gentle souls will rest in perfect peace in Janatul Firdaus. Honorable members, <coughs> sorry, noting that this is the last plenary ordinary session of the National Assembly as campaign for elections to the sixth legislature begins next week, Honorable members will then be reconnecting with their constituencies and electorates for electioneering. Honorable members, I urge you all to campaign peacefully and smoothly. And I wish you all to return refreshed and ready to continue the sterling work started by this fifth legislature. I have served as Speaker of the Parliament, I'm sorry, to, to have served. As Speaker of Parliament has been a great honor afforded to very few in our country's history. I must admit that the job of a Speaker is not an easy one. In fact, I consider it the hardest job in the land, and I can tell you this for free. The expectations of whatever holds, of whoever holds the office are infinite compared to resources that are available. Honorable members, Parliament as an institution, through the help of the authority and the Office of the Clerk, we have repositioned and upgraded the parliamentary service through institutional capacity buildings, recruitment, and relevant trainings. We are very proud that we are leaving Parliament today in good and safe hands as far as institutional memory and capacity are concerned. The employees of the Parliament services are very good people and partners we are all proud of. For Parliament and parliamentarians in general, the future of Gambian progressive politics lies within your hands. I therefore wish the new incoming legislature and members all the best in the great task that lies ahead. There are always long dark nights of the soul, but believe it or not, morning does come often sooner than you think. And again, honorable members, on this note, I wish to thank the honorable deputy speaker, honorable Mamadou L.K. Sane, the honorable majority and minority leader, Honorable K.K. Barrow, Honorable Samba Jalo, and all veterans and doyens of this assembly in the persons of Honorable Sidi Ajata, Honorable Halifa Salah, Honorable Muhammad Magasi, and Honorable Manjango Samusa for their support, guidance, and dedication to the assembly. Equally, I wish to register my thanks and gratitude to the various chairpersons for their contributions to the work of the assembly. Honorable members, I am equally indebted to you all for your cooperation and dedication to duty over the period. My thanks also go to the clerk of the National Assembly, Mr. Mumadu Acise, his deputies, Mr. Daniel Cardos, Mr. M. Buba, M. E. Jata, and Mr. Khalifa M. M. Bai, and indeed all staff of the National Assembly Service for their unflinching hard work, commitment, and dedication. Our best wishes to all of them in their pursuit to providing better services to the sixth legislature. But honorable members, on a special note on chamber and table support services, 
I wish to register my special thanks and gratitude. My special thanks, gratitude, and recognition to the clerk, Mr. Mamadou Asise, and his deputy for legal and procedural matters, Mr. Khalifa M. M. Bai, and table of his team for their extraordinary service to me and the assembly over the years. Honorable members, I am not being biased or discriminatory here, but the clerk and table of his staff have been my immediate assistants with a mountain of challenges which they have endured with professionalism. Equally, I wish to thank and recognize the services of my personal assistants, my orderly, my guards, and my drivers. I am indebted to them all and staff of the National Assembly again. It is a singular honor to serve in the high office of Speaker of the National Assembly. Of course, I had no interest in being here for the sake of being here, and that the only point of being here was to make a difference for the betterment of our country. In some instances, I succeeded. In others, I did not. But such is the nature of life. But honorable mean, um, members, when history is one day written, detached from passions of our time, perhaps we will be remembered as the fifth legislature that we performed well and did raise the bar high as far as representative democracy is concerned. And here I would like to quote Dr. Kwame Nkrumah when he said, in quote, those who would judge us merely by the heights we have achieved would do well to remember the depths from which we started, unquote. And to conclude, honorable members, nothing has brought me greater joy in my tenure as speaker and head of the legislature than the smiles that I have seen on the faces of our staff as a result of securing financial and operational independence of parliament. I am glad that together as a parliament, we were able to save the future of parliament as an institution by the passing of the National Assembly Service Act 2021. I will also continue to support the great causes of nation building as members of this assembly also know very well that I am a passionate Gambian. To honorable members of this parliament, both friends and the chair challengers, and I can confidently say they are spread across both sides of the chambers, I thank you all for the privilege of having worked with you. Whatever has been said, in very chaotic instances sometimes, is now in the past. I bear no malice against anybody. Life is too short for that. This is parliament is a great, and it is a great institution. To my family, thank you for your support and endurance, despite all the challenges associated with the job, who mean a lot to me. In the days ahead, Honorable members, members of the media, I will be spending some time with my family, and I would ask my good friends in the Ford Estate, that is the media, to give us some privacy, as I would cease to be a public figure. And so, having said all that, on this final ordinary session in the National Assembly, and as is now recorded in the landmarks for occasions such as this adjournment debate, it's really been my honor and privilege to have served this institution and my country. And I thank you all for your attention. Thank you. Clark, we may proceed. Thank you. Correction and approval of records of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Wednesday, 23rd February 2022. Thank you very much. Um, honorable members, the record of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Wednesday, the 23rd of 
February 2022 is before us for correction and approval. Can any honorable member please move that the said record of votes and proceedings be considered and approved? Yes, open your name. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. I rest to move that the record of vote and proceedings of the National Assembly sittings of Wednesday, 23rd of February 2020 be considered and approved. Thank you. Thank you. Yani Ja? Second. Second. Thank you very much. It has been moved and seconded that the record of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Wednesday, the 23rd of February 2022 be approved. Now, any corrections or observations from honorable members? we we'll start with the front page. Page one. Attendance, please. Yes, Wooly West. Yes, uh, Honorable Speaker, the first paragraph, the Assembly convened uh, 29 minutes, we say at 29 minutes. And then when you come on the prayers, the paragraph on the prayers, the date there, Tuesday, I believe it was 22nd, not, not 15th. If I'm... Hmm? Yeah, thank you. And that occurs in many places, so you just correct. More on page one. Can you please check the attendance? Go up to page three. Then I take it we don't have any observations on page two. Same with page three. Page four. Then. Five. Yes, Yaniga. Page five. Uh, okay, motion without notice. I think you've seen that. It should not be notice without notice. Motion without notice. Order fifty three K. And uh, if you go to the motion proper, uh, I think what the honourable member said. Uh, let me just read. With leave of the Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Member of Upper Salo move a motion without notice for the Assembly to grant leave to the Select Committee on Education, Training and ICT to meet during the session to engage the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs and the, the other ministry is missing, that is the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Ed Education with relevant stakeholders. I think these two ministries need to be highlighted, not stakeholders only. Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm picking I am not sure whether he was very specific. Uh, okay, we'll capture that. The hands are being provided. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you very much, honorable members. It has been moved and seconded. Oh, sorry. Yes, Jara is. Which page? Thank you, particularly page four. Yes, page four. Question number 021 by the Honorable Member for Sierra Kunda, treated with seven supplementary questions. Was treated with seven supplementary questions. Was. And if you come here where you have uh, uh, page five, you should have read West African Examinations Council. Examinations. Thank you. Yeah, who is? Yes, uh, the same paragraph on the motion without notice, uh, the third line, even page five, the third line, this session, this session is missing. This is missing. Even though you read it, it's, it's missing in the text. Mm. Any more? <laughs> it's okay. Uh, no? All right. Thank you very much. It has been moved and seconded that the record of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Wednesday, the 23rd of February, 2022, be approved with amendment. Those in favor, please say aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. Thank you. So, Claire, can we proceed, please? 
Bill, Standing Order 72, 20, and 75, third reading of the following bill. Information and Communication Amendment Bill 2022 by the Honorable Minister for Information and Communication Infrastructure. Honorable Members will recall that the Committee stage on the Information and Communications Amendment Bill 2022 was concluded on Monday, 21st of February 2022. Accordingly, today is appointed for the third reading in accordance with Standing Orders 73, 4, and 75. In addition, this Assembly may be informed may I inform this assembly that the Honorable Minister for Environment, Climate Change and Natural Resources has been designated to step in for the Honorable Minister for Information and Communication. We received the communication this morning. Therefore, I will invite the Honorable Minister for Environment, Climate Change and Natural Resources to move a motion for the third reading of the bill entitled Information and Communication Amendment Bill 2022. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, I move that the bill entitled Information and Communication Amendment Bill 2022, having gone through the consideration stage with amendments to be read at that time and passed. Thank you. Any second? Yes. Nyanija. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Today we are back to Nyanija. Thank you. I rise a second the motion. That was the only tag that caught my eye. That's why. <laughs> Thank you very much. Honorable members, it has been moved and seconded that the bill Circulated. Yes. yes. The clean copy has been circulated. Usually there are small typographical errors, but the office of the the table office will. No, please. You are, you interrupted the chair, and yet you are dialoguing with your colleagues. <laughs> yes, I think we should be able to. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, honourable. Please say no. So the eyes have it. Now, Clark, just read the, the short title of the bill, please. Thank you. Information and Communications Amendment Bill 2022. 2022, sorry. Thank you. to adjourn this ordinary session, sign a diet. I welcome all honorable ministers here in present to attend this very important sitting of the assembly, being the final adjournment debate of the fifth legislature. This is a unique sitting of the assembly at the end of each ordinary session, allowing honorable members the opportunity to discuss and debate on cross-cutting issues, which of course require the attention of the executive. But at the appropriate time of the debate, I will invite honorable members who are present to take part in the debate and to respond to issues raised regarding their different portfolios. And in accordance with the provisions of Standing Orders Clause 51, no, 
I will now invite the Honorable Majority Leader and Member for Combo South to move a motion for the Assembly to adjourn sine die. But before doing so, I wish to draw the attention of the Assembly to Clause 54.3 of the Standing Orders that no Honorable Member shall speak for more than 15 minutes during the debate except that the Speaker may at his or her discretion, allow the mover of the motion extra time for his or her reply. I'll therefore appeal to honorable members to take note of the said provision of the standing orders regarding the adjournment debate, and I want to invite the honorable majority leader to move the motion for the assembly to adjourn, sign a die. I know that honorable members would want to exhaust their 15 minutes but equally so, I am sure they are in a hurry to rush to their constituencies. So let's bear that in mind, and Honorable Majority, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, in accordance with Clause 541 of the Standing Orders of the National Assembly, I rise to move that this National Assembly do stand a joint sign a die. Honorable Speaker, in moving this motion, I would like to give the August Assembly a summary of what transpired during the first ordinary session in the 2022 legislative year for the period 3rd February 2022 to date. Honorable Speaker, during the course of our deliberations, we considered and adopted records of votes and proceedings of the daily sittings of the National Assembly and accommodated questions for oral answers sessions by the following honorable ministers as required their various uh, portfolios. One, Her Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic, Honorable Minister for Petroleum and Energy, Honorable Minister for Trade, Industry, Regional Integration and Employment, Honorable Minister for Works, Transport and Infrastructure, Minister for Environment, Climate Change and Natural Resources. Honorable Speaker, laying of papers and reports. Honorable Speaker, the following reports were laid by chairpersons and co-chairpersons of various committees of the National Assembly and adopted by this plenary. One, the report of the Finance and Public Accounts Committee on the Gambia Anti-Corruption Bill 2019. Two, report of the Joint Committee on the Public Enterprises and Finance and Public Accounts on the Public Service Pensions Bill 2020. Three, report of the Standing Committee on Human Rights and Constitutional Matters on the Prevention and Prohibition of Torture 2020. Four, report of the Public Appointments Standing Committee for the confirmation of one of the shortlisted persons for appointment as Commissioner at the National Human Rights Commission. Honorable Speaker, motions. Equally, the following motions were moved by Honorable Ministers for Finance and Economic Affairs for the Assembly's consideration and ratification. One, the Development Objectives Grant Agreement between the United States of America and the Republic of the Gambia for Democracy, Peace, Stability, and Hands. Two, the Millennium Challenge Cooperation Threshold Program Grant Agreement between the United States of America acting through the Millennium Challenge Cooperation and the Republic of the Gambia acting through the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs. Three, the loan agreement between the Republic of the Gambia and Islamic Development Bank regarding the widening of Batin Hadin Highway Project, the Gambia. Four, the loan agreement between the Republic of the Gambia and the Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa regarding the widening of Batin Hadin Highway Project. Honorable Speaker, bills. The following bills were considered during the ordinary session and unanimously passed at their third readings by Her Excellency, the Vice President and the Honorable Minister for Information and Communication Infrastructure. One, the Public Service Pensions Bill 2022 by Her Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia, and two, the Information and Communications Amendment Bill 2020 by the Honorable Minister for Information and Communication Infrastructure. However, the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2021, tabled by the Honorable Member for Banjul South, could not pass the second reading due to the absence of uh, due to the absence of the constitutional requirement of Section 2262 
B and 4, B, which required a threshold of two-thirds of all the members of the of, of, uh, present to vote, present to vote. Honorable Speaker, the pending businesses of the Assembly will form part of the legacy report of the fifth legislature for the sixth legislature to take charge and carry on. Honorable Speaker, this August Assembly is here today to commence the motion on the adjournment debate for the Assembly to stand, adjourn, sign a die. Honorable Speaker, a few weeks from now, almost, almost five years in the service of our country, I shall lay down the responsibilities as majority leader of the fifth legislature of this National Assembly. This, if, this afternoon, I come to you with a message of leaving and taking and farewell and to share a few final thoughts with you, members of the Assembly and fellow citizens. And fellow citizen. Like every other citizen, I wish the sixth legislature peace, prosperity, and successful parliamentary term for all. Our people accept us members of the National Assembly to find essential agreement on issues of great moment, the wise resolution of which will better save the future of the nation, and to the best of our abilities, this Parliament of the Fifth Legislature has delivered, has so delivered. Honorable Speaker, on behalf of both sides of the Assembly, I want to seize this opportunity to express our sincere thanks to the people of the Gambia for the trust and confidence response on us in this August Assembly. We reassure them of the Assembly's continued resolve to serve the supreme interest of the Gambia without fear of favor or party affiliation. To honorable colleagues, I would thank you for your foresight and dedication to national duty. It has been a challenging year fulfilling our journey with all of you in the service of the people of the Gambia. History will undoubtedly remember us collectively and individually. Honorable Speaker, I would also like to thank the clerk and staff of the National Assembly Service for all the support and services rendered to honorable members during this session and over the years. Honorable Speaker, I beg to move. Thank you very much. Any seconder? Yes, Honorable Member for Basse. Honorable Speaker, thank you very much for the opportunity. I rise to second the motion on the adjournment debate. Equally to use the chance to address my colleagues and the nation at large. Honorable Speaker, First of all, thanksgiving is going to Almighty Allah, who have given me the long life to be in this parliament almost 10 years now, and to stay healthy, to be able to carry on the responsibility that I should take on. For the speaker, I want to thank the office of the speaker. I want to thank the deputy speaker. I want to thank the majority and the minority leaders of the fifth legislature. When I speak, I want to equally thank the office of the clerk, all the members, all the staff under the office of the clerk, be thanked for the cooperation, the assistance, the collaboration, and the help that you have given us from all angles at any moment. Honorable Speaker, I really want to attest that I'm, I am honored to be one of the few, if it exists, the National Assembly members to come to the parliament on two terms, both on independent tickets. I think I'm the only Gambian so far. But still, I'm making my research. If I'm not the only one, then I am one among the few who had that chance to be elected twice in the parliament on independent ticket. So my constituents who had that trust and confidence in me, I'm really thankful to them. Honest speaker, I want to thank the media fraternity for giving me the visibility all over the world. 
wherever you go today, even Google, if you type the name, my name, Magasi, on a Magasi, you will see my legacy. Thanks to the media fraternity. Honor Speaker, I want to be very thankful to all the partners who helped me to register, to register pro, uh, uh, development in my constituencies, from most boreholes, schools, and other projects, maybe machine and others, farming tools. So all those partners who had helped me from the government and the NGOs within the country and outside the country, I want to be very thankful to all of them. Honorable mm -hmm. Speaker, I want to give a very special thank to a very special person to me. That's my personal assistant, Aisha Sinera, who is known to everybody. This young girl has served the nation through me because any responsibility that I'm called for, if I couldn't go, she's one who represent me. So therefore, today is the day that I should known that to the public and use the, the, uh, the opportunity to really thank and recognize her effort. So I say, if you are here, we thank. Honorary Speaker, I uh, use this uh, opportunity to inform my colleague that uh, this is going to be the last ordinary session in this parliament for me to take part in debate in this fashion. On a speaker, that's simply to tell you I am not going to contest the forthcoming legislative election. I may go for other functions and we build the country in stages. I've done my quarter. I served 10 years in this parliament. I am content and I'm happy that Allah gave me this time to address you and to let you know that this is going to be the last organization for me to attend in this session. So may I use this chance to forgive you if anybody thinks that you have fronted me, I forgive you, but also I may seek for forgiveness if I, in one way or the other, affront anybody. Please forgive me. Honorable Speaker, I want to thank my good friend, my long-time friend, that's Honorable Samba Jallo. We came together in this parliament, 2012. We came again together, 2017. And uh, you see, I and Samba, we have similar stories <laughs> that, that are repeated. I came to this parliament as independent. Samba came to this parliament on the NRP, and he became the, the minority leader, 2012. 2017, I came back again as independent. Samba came again on the NRP and they be the minority leader. So therefore, our histories are similar. Honorable Samba Jallo, I wish you to come back again. But if you come this time, you will miss Magasi, because Magasi is not coming back to this parliament. So on that note, I really want to thank everybody. And to the executive, as I used to say, cooperation must continue. The executive cannot execute anything without the cooperation of the parliament. But the parliament also cannot prosper without the cooperation of the executive. It's one Gambia, one nation. If we work together, we, are, we will be able to realize all our dreams. But if we work separately, it's going to be a problem for all of us. On that note, I want to thank each and everybody. Long live the Gambia, long live the parliament, long live the people of Basi. Thank you very much, Honorable Member for Banjul North.
For the honorable members, it has been moved and seconded that this August Assembly do consider the motion for this ordinary session to, ad to stand adjourned. Sign it aye. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. So may I now call on the honorable members who wish to take part. I already have a long list, so if I was tempted to go <laughs> through my, we've taken all of your tags down, but mind you not, yeah. Mind you not, thank you. Yes, back how you are down, it's only Birkama North, yeah. Thank you very much, honorable speaker. Honorable speaker, Today, the last sitting and the last session of the fifth legislature is what we are witnessing. It is an historic day. It is a solemn day. It is a day to acknowledge. It is a day to identify challenges, it is a day to wish farewell to those that have expressed their desire and made the announcement that they are not coming back, and those who also wish to come back. Honorable Speaker, the fifth legislature has been exceptional in the history of politics, political representation in the country for various reasons. It is the legislature that has first started to assert independence. To exercise what has been provided in terms of separation of powers. I'm not sure whether we have completely succeeded, but the, attempt has been, the attempts have been made, and it has set the standards for representation. Any future legislature that comes will not have any excuse because this assembly, this legislature has set the pace, has set the standards in terms of representation. We have our moments when we, uh, party politics played out and not national interest, but we also had moments when national interest, the pursuit for national interest had been demonstrated. Honorable Speaker, as I said, this day is also emotional. As we are parting, as I said, some wish to come back, some have decided not to come back. I want to take this opportunity to wish each and every one of us well in our endeavors. We have, during the past five years, been relating at the level of plenary and at the level of our committees and have developed that relationship at the personal level and also official level. And all had been well. It has been cited that as there were times when Tempest flared up here, but all the same, we would come back and then continue to assume our duty, our supreme duty as representatives of the Gambian people. Gambians have been monitoring what had been taking place here 
some acknowledge what we have been doing others have expressed skepticism but these are all lessons for us and also the incoming sixth legislature that people have expectations we are supposed to be serving their interests as provided for by section 112 of the constitution of the republic of the gambia this country republic that all our pronouncements all our actions must be dictated by conscience and what serves the national interest some of us have been doing all our best to ensure that that provision is respected people should continue to monitor the activities of the national assembly the actions of national assembly members the pronouncements of national assembly members to see whether they are in consonance to what serves their interests as i said the relationship has not only been limited to between national assembly or among national assembly members but also the staff i also want to take this opportunity to commend the staff the speaker the clerk the deputy clerks the table office director who is now elevated to the rank of deputy clerk which he deserves and all the members of the national assembly service they have been exceptional very supportive to the work we have been doing honorable speaker as i said we have a legacy this fifth legislature in terms of the standards we have set the pace setting and in fact you've even cited it in your statement farewell statement that in terms of the questions we had been, this legislature had been more critical in terms of engagement with the executive the committees in fact for us the committees that i served in we have not inherited anything from the fourth legislature and i believe we have something to bequeath to the sixth legislature the committees the plenary so this is really an accomplishment but as i said the other times when we have also failed the expectations of the population in terms of the bills that came before us and they are numerous in as much as we had made uh, tremendous efforts in terms of bringing in progressive bills that became law we have also failed them in certain instances and these are lessons to be learned the constitutional uh, the constitution draft constitution this is something that is i hold dear and any incoming legislature must pursue this we have had the expressed uh, the, the 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 executive express interest in bringing a new legislature i am calling on the members of the sixth legislature the population of the gambia civil society all to ensure that gambia deserves a constitution that embraces all that will factor the interests of women we have attempted with a bill to empower women and the new question that is coming must ensure that women are empowered persons living with disability are empowered youth are empowered and the population in general are served I wish to commend the electorate of Banjulmot for having given me the opportunity to serve the Gambia. And I would also want to implore on the executive that we have challenges. In as much as this day for me, I want to dedicate it to the National Assembly. I would not resume my seat without talking about a challenge, a major challenge. And I wish the, uh, the Honorable Minister for Works, Transport and Infrastructure course around. The environment is here. The Honorable Vice President is also here. To take note, one we have one major challenge. Banjul, as a region, is being threatened by climate change, and one of the factors to mitigate climate change 
is to promote uh, and protect the environment and the ecology. And one way of doing that is to build canals. This open drain that is just behind the National Assembly is an issue that needs to be tackled. The next, the next legislature should really focus on that and the next executive to ensure that it is addressed if we want to avoid banjul submerging underwater. Honorable Speaker, as I said, we have made a lot of efforts in terms of representation. The committees have also been very proactive in terms of oversight, particularly the committees that I belong to. And these are lessons to be learned by the incoming legislature, the sixth legislature. As I said, we must continue to assert the independence of this arm of the state. We are not antagonists, we are not adversaries with any arm of the state, particularly the executive. We are all supposed to be served and duty bound to serve the people of the Gambia. So that all our actions must be nothing other than serving the interests of the people of the Gambia. I want to also take this opportunity to pay tribute to everybody, particularly those who have served exceptionally well and have been doing it without any partisan consideration for the national interest. We have a duty to serve, but there is also a limit. The Honorable Member for Sierra Kunda informed this August Assembly that he is not coming back. And I respect that. And I understand why. And I support that as well. But I believe we need to pay tribute to him for the services. He has demonstrated non-partisanship. We should be emulated by all of us here. And of course, equality goes to the Honorable Member for Willie West, being a doyen. This is what we need. We need servants who are selfless. who promote the interests of the nation first and foremost. Politics is not the business for self. It's not the best business for individuals. It's, not, it's the business of the people. Anybody who's opting for political office must be ready to serve, to relegate self-interest, personal interest, and promote national interest. And that is what the member of Serkunda has been demonstrating. We too have been trying. Of course, quite a, some members here, that is the way to go. When we are here, as has been mentioned by the member for Wuli, party tax are outside. We leave them outside. It's national interest. It's unfortunate that there were instances when party, partisan interest played out here which is very unfortunate and which has been deplored by the population of the Gambia. That is not what is expected of the National Assembly and National Assembly members. Of course, we are parties, we are from parties, but once you are a National Assembly member, you are a National Assembly member of the Gambia and should not serve anything other than the Gambia. So this is a lesson that I would want the fifth legislature to learn from, to take note of, that when you are, are here, party interest is outside, it's national interest. Conscience and national interest has, has been clearly spelled out by section 112. We are not, as I said, we are not antagonists. 
to the executive, we, are, we should work in human I'm an honorable member for Lower Salum. No, he hasn't started. Thank you, um, honorable speaker. Yeah. Please watch the clock, the timer. Yeah. I'll go less than 15 minutes. Thank in um, um, thanks to the Almighty God who, gave me the, who blessed me this day to stand before the um, National Assembly members. Um, thank you, honorable speaker, for better presiding the National Assembly members. Um, thank you, honorable colleagues. Um, thank you, the people of Lower Salem, um, who elected, who voted me in this office, being the ninth parliamentarian in Lower Salem. Um, honorable Speaker, I must thank um, the staff of the parliament, the office of the clerk, and my senior veteran um, uh, parliamentarians. Um, honorable Speaker, the leadership of parliament, I must thank them also for guiding us through procedure. Um, honorable Speaker, I uh, thank the people of Lower Sahel who has the trust and confidence in me for putting me um, from 2017 to 2022 um, been the parliamentary uh, uh, parliamentarian um, within um, this tenure in office. Um, honorable Speaker, yes, indeed, I cannot satisfy the entire people of Lower Salem, but I must thank them for bringing me in this office. A leader, you can just do a quarter, you can do all. It's a continuous progress, leaders, it comes and go. But I must thank them for giving, the, giving me their, their um, confidence. And again, to thank the government of the day. Honorable Speaker, a lot of have done in Lower Salvo today. Um, is the government of the day who supported the people of Lower Salvo. Not all, but I know in future, um, most things will be done in Lower Salem. But today I can raise my hand. Most projects come from um, um, Lower Salem. It is within my tenure in office. Um, Honorable Speaker, I have nothing to say. Just thank you for the people of Lower Salem. Um, Honorable Speaker, I must thank the President of the Republic of the Gambia, who also moved the democracy of this um, country to the higher level. Now, everybody uh, participate fully in politics, which we are all yearning for. Um, honorable Speaker, because of the, um, the, the, the free democracy that we had in the Gambia, allow people to exercise their right and their freedom, which I also thank the government of the day. Today, the entire Gambian people knows their right. Whether you are doing the good thing or not make sure that, as a leader, do the right thing, because people are working on you. Um, Honorable Speaker, also thank the media fraternity uh, within our midst. Also, to know that um, Gambia safety is in their, life, uh, in their hands. Let them also know what is good for the um, Gambian people. Giving information, information is, is rich, and information is expensive. Before giving any information, Make sure you get the correct, correct, um, correct um, history or, or, or story about that about that individual or about the about the side of story that you're going to give out the, um, to the people because information is expensive. Honourable Speaker, I have nothing to say today. Just to thank the people of Lower Salem that I have served um, for five years. 
in office. And again, expecting them also to re-elect me again. Yes, um, Honorable Speaker, I must thank uh, my mentor, Honorable Member for Serekunda, who has already decided. Yes, what Honorable Member for Banjul not says, we have seen it in, in Parliament here. Uh, party politics is outside. He is always yearning for the interests of the Gambian people, which we are also added to that. Um, Honorable Speaker, yes, indeed. He has, we, we must respect him on his, um, on his, I'd call it, declare that he's not going to come back to the politics. But still now, Gambia belongs to us. And we are young. And we still allow him also to give us chance to educate us as the young, um, um, the young um, people in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the country. We, are also, we also respect him on the, what he has demonstrated in the chamber. Um, Honorable Speaker, nothing will say to him unless we must thank him. Because he, pro he, he protects the integrity of this Gambian people and he protects and he always tries to see people first, nothing more. We know he, he is, he, he, he is um, a leader of a party, but that party will Kola will never sown in this chamber. We must thank the member of Seregunda for serving Gambian people. For us also, the entire parliamentary also, uh, parliament, uh, parliament uh, members serving us. Um, Dan Kungu, we also thank you for your um, being a minority leader in this um, parliament, putting everybody together. Honorable Majority Leader, uh, keep out, um, for Combo South, um, Woldy West, Basse, being the veteran parliamentarian that you thought of how we going to um, give our, uh, our procedural matters. I must thank my honorable members, um, thank the staff of the parliament, thank the honorable ministers, which we had a problem for our constituencies, they also not they, they will not tackle all, but then most of our problems in constituencies are tackled by the um, the ministers. And I know you are representing your own people, daughters, wife, brothers, sisters. Um, Honourable Speaker, today in Lower Salem is a different in Lower Salem. Yes because we have, we, we have represented them here, and we are the march piece of, their, uh, uh, of the people of Lower Salem. But whatever they cry to, we, we advocate it here. We, Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alamin, it has already existed in, 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 in Lower Salem. Not all, but still now, um, asking um, the ministers also to concentrate uh, more development in Shalom, whereby we will, we will also be part and parcel of what they are also enjoying. Um, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, the people of um, Lower Salem. Thank you, Gambian people. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Member for Woolly West. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I don't know whether 15 minutes are adequate for me to talk today. But what I would do is just, I'll just be provoking your thoughts. And uh, in that way, I may accomplish what I want to do. When I speak, I'll be reflecting about the whole institution of parliament and representation. What we have inherited from outside. This parliament is an inheritance from the colonizers. And colonization is the greatest crime committed against humanity. And its wounds are eternal. They are everlasting. 
they destroy. Where they make, they also destroy. The destruction is more than the making. But we are not reflecting on these fundamentals. We fall for independence because we want to be ourselves. Essentially, what, that's what independence is about. It's not just to have a minister, a black minister, a black president, and a national flag, a national anthem. No! It is to be yourself, to be rediscover yourself, to become yourself. But have we become ourselves independent nations all over the world? Those who are ones that were once colonized, are they really independent? Are we independent? My colleagues, let's question ourselves. Some of us may not come back here again. Some have decided not to come. Some are going to back to the polls. And I wish you all success. But the fundamental question remains. For me, the mission is incomplete. My mission, c'est une mission qui est incomplete. So, I'm well. Yes, some say that he's old, yes. But what has it to do with knowledge? What has it to do with determination? What has it to do with the desire to serve your people? When you can, you have the ability, you have the capacity, you have the, the will and the intention. What is wrong with it? What is age in the face of struggle to rediscover yourself? If you are still able-bodied, intellectually, mentally alert, what is wrong in wanting to serve your people? My life has been simply that. From primary school to date, I have been in that mood, and that is what I'm going to die in that, to serve my people. It is not an easy struggle. For 50-something years, we have been here. And are we convinced that we are really helping our people to become a people? Are we helping our people by virtue of what we are doing here to make our people sovereign people? Not because we are saying they are sovereign, but they come to the conscious realization that they are sovereign people, that they own this country, that they are the people who matter, who make decisions, who should decide what serves their interests and what does not serve their interests. That is the job that we, have been, we should have been doing. We who are their representatives. And that's why we are representatives. We are here precisely to perform that job. Particularly we who are coming from very far away. We are coming from a very far away. From a dominated colonial society. Denied in every respect. Even denied your culture. Denied your language. That identifies you and makes you different from other, other people. You are denied all that. And now you fought, you say you are independent, and you still continue to wallow in the use of that same weapon that was used to destroy you. And we say we are independent, and we say we are serving our people. I'm speaking here, my people who really don't understand a word of what I'm saying here, and I'm supposed to be representing them. This is a paradox. This is a contradiction. The first thing that we should have thought about when we conquered independent, if you really have conquered it, was how do we become ourselves? How do we become one with our people? How do we become one with our people that we are serving? These questions were never posed mostly by the first generation of politicians. 
I wouldn't blame them much because they were concerned with other problems. Problems that have to do with governance, problems that have to do with education. But the unfortunate thing is that we have been independent Africa for more than half a century. And we are still dependent. Dependent in every respect. We hardly can do anything here without recourse to help from outside. Even though we have everything in our continent. Everything that you can imagine, we have it. We have it in abundance. But we are poor in the midst of abundance. Materially poor in the midst of abundance. In fact, morally poor. Intellectually poor. Because that is why we are always having recourse to the outsiders. Because we don't have confidence that we have the capacity intellectually to do what is necessary to change the, this, this, our continent. I'm sorry, but these are very important questions. We may close here in the name of our people. I didn't know anything about them. And these are the same laws that they use to, 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 to take them to court. But they have no idea about those laws. Because of what? Because of the language in which those laws are couched in. And we have done nothing about that. I pray all my colleagues who are here and are going back to the polls, I pray that you all come. English or French, but because he or she can speak his or her language, can come here and democracy will become democracy. Not democracy in words, but democracy indeed in practice. How many people have been excluded from coming here? How many of them have been very intelligent, philosophically minded people outside there? Who know everything that we are doing here, but they are not here simply by virtue of the fact that the weapon that was used to destroy all of us is the same weapon that we are using here to promote their interest. Impossible. I know people who say Syria is very controversial. I don't care. It is controversy that moves knowledge forward. But these are not just mere controversies. These are facts, unshakable facts. Unshakable facts. If I sit here, sometimes I feel funny. I spend nights pulling these things in my head. Why is things, why are things, uh, things what they are? Why can't we just turn them around and become what we want them to become? No, because we are still separated from our people, just like colonialists. They were separated from our people. <laughs> because you, they cannot speak English. And you say you are participatory, there is no participatory democracy here. Democracy is a sham everywhere. A ah, big sham everywhere in the world. Whether in the United States or in Russia or in France or China, democracy is a sham. It's all rubbish. Sorry, I withdraw. <laughs> so I wind up. Okay. Madam Speaker, I want to thank everybody here for having worked with me. We have worked here. We are all here by our interest and our determination to serve our people. Let us continue in that spirit even where we are outside these chambers. It's not only here that you can serve your people. We can serve our people in whatever capacity we are outside or inside. But the most important thing is there is a job to be done still.
we have gone nowhere. There is a job to be But the means are here. The resources are here. All that we need is to reorganize ourselves and become selfless in rendering service to our people. We have to sacrifice. That word I have always used it here. The word sacrifice, no development can take place in an ex-colony without sacrifice. You have to do with pleasures. You have to do with pleasures, otherwise we cannot move anywhere. The money you use to have your pleasures is the money that must be used to serve the fundamental interests of your people. What do we have to sow for our 56 years of sovereignty? What do we have to sow for it? My critics will say, there is crazy. I'm not crazy. 56 years of sovereignty in a sovereign country like Gambia? 57 years, somebody is saying 57 now. What do we have to sow for it? Big debt, indebted to our neck. To a point that we cannot even pay what we owe. Because when we pay what we owe, we will die. Even though we are paying heavily, but it's not enough. What we are paying is what we should use to bring about development. Somebody will tell me there is no country that has not taken debt. Yes, there are countries which have never taken debt and they will never take. I know them. In fact, there are countries where they are paying less tax. They don't tax people because they have succeeded in developing the productive sectors of their economy to such a point that there is no, no need to tax. Money is coming. They are generating revenue. Why do you have to tax me when they are, the, the land is generating the revenue for the people to be free? That is what we are marching towards. So. That country is going to be like that. I see a day, even when I die, take it, even my absence. Gambia will come a day when nobody will pay a tax because we'll develop this country in such a way that it will become generative of revenue without tax. Thank you very much, madam. Bakau. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I am going to be very brief. I recognize the presence of Her Excellency. It is all meant for members to raise issues concerning their constituencies. It's almost five years today. I have raised so many concerns concern, concerning my constituency, Bacau. I would like to highlight some of them. Madam Speaker, it's almost five years today. I have emphasized that can occupy that can be occupied to accommodate state guests instead paying expensive hotels for our state guests but up till now the executive field independent stadium host most of our international games I have said, raise this issue to the executive of the poor condition, and nothing has been done about it up till now. And we, have, we are all aware that CAF have taken serious action against the government. Speaker, 
It's almost five years today. I've raised a concern about a police station in Bakau of lacking a mobility. I've made that appeal before the minister here several times. Mobility. Madam Speaker, I've raised a concern here almost five years today. A culvert linking Sting Corner to Old Cape Road of the poor condition of that culvert. And I'm so the Honorable Minister of Work will attest to that concern. And I'm aware that the Minister leaves just two or three minutes work to that culvert up till now. The situation of that culvert is getting serious every day. And Honorable Minister, I'm sure you are using that route every day and you have seen the condition of that culvert. Up till now, the government failed to respond positively to that concern. Today, Honorable Speaker, I've been making this issue to the minister responsible that I have been receiving so many complaints from my electorates that since most of the members talk of non-partisan when we are in chambers. I want to make a recommendation from that wall before the swearing of the new parliament. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, honorable member for Kiang Central. Thank you very much, honorable speaker, for giving me the floor. Honorable Speaker, I will equally join my honorable colleagues to thank the people of the Gambia for having confidence and trust in us. Particularly the people of Kian Sandra. For giving me the opportunity to serve my country for five years. Honorable Speaker, I will not waste much of the Assembly's time today just to make my call or just to emphasize the calls that I have been making since the inception. Honorable Speaker, you have so many people that are really suffering, so many people that are really crying in this country in terms of rent. Honorable Speaker, I've been calling on the Honorable Minister for Local Government to please face this challenge and as a minister to take it as a responsibility. The landlords are now taking law into their own hands by increasing the rent, sometimes even on weekly basis, sometimes on monthly basis. There is a gap that we need to fill. There is, uh, if you looked at the Rent Act 2014, the landlords before the amendment are not given the power to increase their rent without consulting the council. And after that amendment, now the leeway is given to them now to go and increase. I have been calling and then talking to the minister. Why not you bring the act, we do the amendment, to put it in such a way that you will not have the chance to go and increase the rent any time. And sometimes you see they increase more than 100%. But the defense or the response 
always come from the minister is that aspect has been taken away from my ministry. Let me say this. The tribunal aspect of rent is what is withdrawn from the ministry of local government. But the regulatory aspect is still with the ministry. I think it's high time, Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Minister of Local Government, for him to act together with all the stakeholders in that ministry. Where I was, I, I stayed before, that was in Tallinn, and there is an apartment that I visited there last week. The tenant were paying $4,000 per month. And all of a sudden, the landlord came and increased to 7000 They were left with no other option but to vacate the place. In terms of cost of living, Honorable Speaker, in terms of rent, we are sitting on time bomb. I tell you this. There will come a time if no measure is taken to address these issues, people will go out. People will take law into their own hands. And you will see that one. Take it from me. I am not praying for that. And I'm not inciting anyone, but the way things are happening in this country, there's a need. I mean, we, we have a government. The landlords have right to increase, but the government here is a roughly anyone who wants to bring a foul play, you saw them the yellow card or the red card. You go to other countries, this is what is happening. People must take their responsibility. Again, in connection to that honorable speaker, you have a lot of real, I mean, property dealers in this country. You have Gambians that are working both in the country and abroad, they will manage to save something from their small salary to try and then buy a land on installment. You will pay after three years, you ask them to show you the land that you've been paying for. They will not be able to show you any uh, piece of land. Why? Because that, I mean, the housing agent, the property dealers in this country, Honorable Speaker, there's a need for us to have a law. Again, I've been saying this in the parliament, but the response from the honourable minister is, is not part, is not, that aspect is not uh, under my ministry. Yes, I know. There was a time the honourable minister and, and honourable attorney general and minister of justice informed me that they are working on a bill that will be, that they will bring before this uh, assembly, it will be tabled before the national assembly for us to look at the issues that, I mean, are really affecting the property dealers, to have a law in place that will regulate their dealings. It has never happened. So these are issues, it's tight, high time that Honorable Speaker, the Minister of Local Government addressed the issue of rent in this country. Afrik Gambians are suffering. The landlord are increasing any time that they feel like increasing. And I was equally made to understand that particularly the big stores that are on the highways, they even ask for foreign currency when it comes to payment. They ask for dollars. The legal tender in this country is dollar C. We must understand that one. Honorable Speaker, where I come from, that is Kiang, is one of the areas with a very thick forest. But it's, it's unfortunate this time of the year, if you go there, just last evening I returned. People started setting the entire forest cover on fire. Again, I spoke to the Honorable Minister for Forestry and Environment. The fine attached to those that are really uh, found wanting, or those that are really guilty of setting the forest on fire, $1,500 a fine, $3,000 is nothing. Let's look at the Forestry Act and amend it. Anytime there is bush fire, somebody must be responsible. If you cannot find the culprit, where the fire starts, in between the two villages, you sue the two alcalos. They will tell you who is responsible. This is the only way that we can solve the problem. And then the havoc caused by these bushfires, you cannot quantify it. The animals are suffering, particularly this time of the year. They find it difficult to have food. Honorable Speaker, in Kian Central, there is off-the-road settlement called Kavada. I think since we started. In fact, there was a time, any time that I stand to talk, they will say, electricity and road, that's what he's coming to talk about. The issue of electricity is partially addressed, partially addressed. But the road that linked Quinala to the nine of village, the villages that are off the road, the Kabada settlement of Kian Central, are really suffering. 
There is a senior secondary school and a middle school in Quinala. There is a weekly LUMO, and you have a lot of people who normally travel from that end to come to Quinala and then attend the LUMO and the students as well as to, uh, to attend the, the, the junior and then senior secondary school in Quinala. But the role there, I don't know what type of role is there. It's, 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 it's not even a feeder role. It's not even qualified to be called a feeder role. We will find a name and then give it. Even the, 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 the cyclists find it difficult to, to move on that road. I've been talking, I've been complaining about that role. I think it's high time. We are not asking for a tar role now, but let's do something to at least level so that people with the bicycle can at least use the road comfortably. That has been my cry. And again, you have a village again in Kian Central, Honorable Speaker. The inhabitants are more than 10,000. And if you looked at the water that they drink, it's as red as this seed. If you go to Quinala, it's really disheartening. You see the type of water that people in that settlement used to drink. So I've been calling on the Ministry of Water Resources to please help. Please come to our aid and then solve this problem. Finally, Honorable Speaker, again, the Ministry of Local Government and land where the issue of religious affairs is. We all know there are two religious groupings in this country, and you only know their existence when Ramadan is coming. Rodadul Majalis is this way, Supreme Islamic Council is in this way. And let me tell you that both are registered and they, they all have their own constitution, they are all registered. So when Ramadan is fast approaching, these people will say, day A, uh, Monday is the day that we should start fasting. The router will come and say, instead of Monday, it's Tuesday. So it's very, very conflicting, Honorable Minister. And I've been appealing to you, call both parties, and then you discuss with them. Let's solve this problem. If indeed they are really interested in unifying the Muslims in this country, this problem by now should have been solved. We cannot afford to have two religious groupings in this country. There will come a time they can even I mean, create problem in this country. They all have their regional bureaus. They all have their regional representatives. If indeed they are sincere, if indeed they are honest enough and they are all working towards one cause, that is to satisfy God, I don't think they should be fighting. I don't think they should even be quarreling. But in a few weeks' time, you will hear, Rauda will say Tuesday, Supreme Islamic Council will say Monday. So Gambians sometimes, you see Muslims are lost. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. And we have a government in place. The role of government is to protect people. The role of government is to protect people and they look at the interests of the, uh, the majority. But when we leave things uncontrolled, when we leave things unchecked, people to do whatever they feel like doing, then at the end of the day, our society will turn into a jungle society, survival of the fetus, which we shall never allow. On that note, Honorable Speaker, I thank you very much for giving me the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Member for Kumbo East. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. Honorable Speaker, I must thank God the Almighty, the Sustainer, and the one who created everything into stages. Uh, and I must thank the people of Combo East for the trust and confidence reposed on me to represent them in the nation's Bantaba. I must commend them for that worthiness. Honorable Speaker, uh, obviously I must concur with my honorable member for Kiang East, sorry, Kiang Central, with regards to these uh, religious issues. I think it's high time for the government to come up with a tangible solution in order to make this matter once and for all, particularly the Ministry of Lands and Regional Government. Honorable Speaker, having said that um, the Ministry of uh, Regional Government as again, uh, would like to be very much mindful of the situation in this country with regards to the land grabbing. Honorable Speaker, with, with among villages, the community and uh, individuals, there are a lot of land grabbing in this country. And I think the Ministry has a created, instituted um, a land commission. This land commission should be responsible for issues related to matter, land matters. 
But unfortunately, as of now, there are issues regarding to these land issues. Up to now, this matter has not ever, never been solved. I think it's high time for the Ministry of Lands and Regional Government to please come up with a, a solution whereby we can able to uh, create this uh, environment for everybody. Having said that, Honorable Speaker, I must commend the Ministry for Agriculture, particularly the Minister for Agriculture. The, 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 the stretch from Pirang to Faraba was a very important stretch, and I believe the Minister made a promise that she's going to do her best to ensure that this, uh, this, this area has been constructed, and she has done that. I must commend her and thank her so very much for her commitment and foresight. Kudos to the Minister for Agriculture. Honorable the Minister for Energy have done a great effort because not all, but part of the constituencies have been given electricity. And I must thank the government of the day for creating an enabling environment to ensure at least the people of the other region also deserve, uh, also, uh, also deserve the national cake. Honorable, Mr. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I must thank the Ministry for Water Resources and Natural Resources for giving out boreholes to so many areas in this country. If I could remember, 144 communities was benefited with these boreholes. That include my area. I must thank them so sincerely. I know all the all the efforts cannot be cannot be cannot be proved futile. And all the challenges cannot be solved at the same time. But we also have some inter achievements. And I must commend the minister and the, and, and the ministry for their efforts to ensure that these people have drinking, safe drinking water in our areas. Honorable Speaker, coming back to Parliament, I must thank all my colleagues. For the past five years, we've been interacting, very cordial relationship together. And I believe we cannot solve all the problems, but part of the problem is solved. Absolutely, I believe uh, people are saying the partisan policy is very true, but that is not very much exercise in this parliament. Because people are very much matured enough to ensure let us work hard for the best interests of this nation. And that's what we are demonstrating, and most of the members are demonstrating. And I believe we will miss each other for the interest of good. But what is important here, let us make sure that this work for the interest of this nation. The country is bigger than everybody. Though we are coming with, we, we all came through t uh, party tickets, but the, 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 in, the, the government go, goes and come, but the state institution remains the same. The Republic of the Gambia is one. You can never change that. Therefore, it is incumbent on everybody, particularly the members, let us all preach peace. Peace is very priceless, and nobody can go without peace. No development can, go without, can, can, can be instituted without peace. Therefore, it is the responsibility of everybody, including all members here, to make sure that when you go to your constituencies, you have to preach peace. Peace should be the order of the day. I'm, I'm appealing to all members, please. On that note, Honorable Speaker, we must thank the Office of the Speaker the Office of the Clerk, and all the staff in the National Assembly here. One way or the other have, done a, have contributed immensely towards the success of this fifth legislature. And I must thank uh, honorable ministers, who sometimes, most of the time they are always here with us, all right, and that give us some answers to certain questions that concerns them. On that note, honorable speaker, I thank everybody, and I must make sure that everybody Whosoever goes to your constituency, you have to preach peace. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Um, thank you, Honorable Member for Fonyi Kansala. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. And uh, Honorable Speaker, it's a moment for reflection. And uh, I will borrow from the Honorable Member for Willie West. It's equally a moment for self-interrogation. We have served precisely five years, and uh, it's the moment when we should reflect on the gains, the challenges, and the way forward. If any of us is fortunate to be re-elected, 
we should try in as much as possible to consolidate on those gains. And if happens the other way around, we should be grateful to the Almighty Allah for giving us an opportunity to serve our people to the best of our ability. Honorable Speaker, I want to touch on history just a little. And uh, that is to reflect on three key issues. I remember during my first adjournment debate here, I stated that we, and when I say we, that is myself and my colleagues from the same party, would be an opposition with a difference. And I am, I think, not think, but I am on record. Why? Being an opposition doesn't necessarily mean we should be seen criticizing the government and not applauding the government for the gains. But instead, we will be ready to applaud the government, support the government, should any business come to, before us in this chamber and is meant to address the welfare of the Then, Honorable Minister, whether he'll be the person in charge by the time the sixth legislature is in or not, these two projects are there to the people of Kansala. Honorable Speaker, I remember also questioning and challenging the presence of the foreign sister forces in Funyi. And uh, I think what happened during the first week of February should be history, and that history is something that we will all reflect and look at the way forward. Honorable Speaker, it did not tell well, but the two key stakeholders, the Honorable Minister for Defense and Interior, are here before me. I must commend them for the interaction and the support and the collaboration during the period. I must equally thank the Chair of the Defense and Security Committee the Honorable Deputy Speaker, and uh, the Deputy Chair of the Defense and Security Committee, the Right Honorable Halifa Salah. That being said, I want to link and recognize the efforts of the following individuals. And to begin with yourself, the Right Honorable, Honorable Speaker of the National Assembly, for your intervention during that needy time to the internal displaced people. I thank you and I salute you on behalf of the people of Kansala. In the same vein, I want to recognize the efforts of the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Defense. I equally want to recognize the efforts of the Honorable Minister of Agriculture. I equally want to recognize the efforts of the Honorable Minister of Defense. And in terms of institutions, I want to recognize the efforts and the support and collaboration by the Fony Agency for Rural Development, FAD. All these individuals and institutions have played a pivotal role in supporting and ensuring that the internally displaced people have a peace of mind during those hard moments. Honorable Speaker, I equally want to say this. The Office of the Clerk and the entire staff of the National Assembly have been very supportive, regardless of your position in the National Assembly. We thank and recognize your support. But again, I will come back to this issue of um, the foreign forces who are in the country. I urge and challenge the government to look to a lasting solution in revisiting whatever agreement that is there. Because, as I said, our people are vulnerable. Vulnerable in the sense that they are in between two people or two enemies. So they cannot be continued to be used as a human seal is unfair and it cannot happen and we must work together to come up with a lasting solution to this problem. Honorable Speaker, I now move to a colleague, a mentor, a coach and someone who inspired me in my work. In fact, they, were, they are two. My current leader of the party, who have once served as a majority leader in this chamber, 
on two terms, the Right Honorable Al-Haji Fabakari Tombongjata, I must commend him and salute him for all the guidance that he has given me during the period. I want to thank the Right Honorable Khalifa Ababakar Salah, who has declared that he is not coming back to this chamber. Honorable Speaker, here is a gentleman that I have served as co-leaders of the Inter-Party Committee. Today, the Inter-Party Committee, the partners, UNDP for that matter, is using the Gambian model to make sure that what is happening in the Gambia in terms of the manner in which the Inter-Party Committee is operating happens in the sub-region. And uh, he can bear with me that the resident rep, I said today, told us that her colleagues in the region are asking her, how did the Gambia Inter-Party achieve the successes that they have recorded? I remember two weeks back when the international idea through the eminent person, Dr. Ibn Chambers, we are a meeting. And this were his words. He said the peace that was, that was attained during the presidential election, the umbilical cord of that peace is the Interparty Committee that warranted the sub-region to have interest to come and learn what is actually happening in the Gambia and replicate it in the sub-region. Honorable Co-Chair, I commend and salute you for your guidance your coaching and your mentorship. I have no regret being very close to you, and I think I am one of those MPs who, are, who have that rare opportunity of sitting with you right in your house to discuss issues of national interest. But I must challenge those who shared your teachers for not putting one right before me. I don't think, apart from your party mates, there is any member of this National Assembly who is close to you than me. It doesn't exist. It's our work that dictated that. And I have no regret, and the entire IPC have no regret for that close collaboration that we had with you. Honorable Speaker, we are about to witness the campaign, and this starting point is the nomination. I want to challenge myself, and I want to challenge my colleagues, that let us desist from defamatory and inflammatory language. Hate speech would not take us anywhere. Let it be campaign based on issues. That is the only thing that will move this country. And the electorate should be voting based on that. I have no intent to stand in a political platform and call the name of the people that will be contesting the elections with me. I will never do it because I believe I have tried to the best of my ability to serve my people. So I will tell them what I intend doing moving forward. Based on that, it's up to them to either vote me in back or do, the other way, do it the other way around. And again, the IPC, in collaboration with the organizers of the presidential debate in the United States, and the first time it happened in the Gambia, we are working with them to ensure that come the National Assembly elections, there will be debates in town halls. So prepare yourself and know that the IPC is working in close, close collaboration with the National Democratic Institute, NDI, to ensure that wherever elect, um, National Assembly uh, aspiring candidates are going to canvass for votes, there will be town hall debates, where the electorates will be seated to listen to who really have an agenda that needs to be sold, and the electorates will buy the agenda. We are very hopeful that NDI will sponsor it 100%. In fact, tomorrow, we will finalize on the arrangement. Honorable Speaker, finally, I want to thank the people of Kansala, through whom I have also tried to contribute my little quota to all what transpired in these four corners of the chamber. Without them electing me to come and represent them here, I don't think I would have had the opportunity to contribute my little quota to all what transpired during the past, uh, during the past five years. By extension, I want to thank the Gambian people. Honestly, when I am out of the chamber or I am out of a radio or TV program, the amount of people that will call or we meet in the streets and they will appreciate what I have done, they are many. 
So I want to thank all the sympathizers. I want to thank all those who were following my deliberations in the National Assembly and in all other platforms for giving me the encouragement to be doing what I was doing during the past. But again, history has it that in the history of Fonyi Kansala, I am the second National Assembly member to represent my people in the opposition. Because the first was the late um, Honorable Henry Michael Jame. The rest were all serving in the government of the day. And I am the second person to serve in an opposition ticket in the National Assembly. But I think they have the final say to compare and contrast and see who really represented them as far as um, representation is concerned. Honorable Speaker, finally, I want to thank your office. I want to thank the clerk. I want to thank all the deputy clerks for the support and the collaboration during the period. And I think the Honorable Member for Willie West once said it here, that cabinet should know that we are in it together to move for the betterment of this country. But if they want a war between us, well, we will see who will be the winner at the, at, at, the, at the end of it. I think that has actually sent a message and has given a dramatic, a dramatic change in the manner in which um, cabinet ministers were responding and reacting to issues that were posed to them by the National Assembly member. I think it has really helped them better understand that we are not enemies, but we are in it together. They have a responsibility, we also have a responsibility. And together, we can move this country to the next level. My colleagues, I appreciate working with all of you, and I know we will miss each other during the period. We pray to the Almighty Allah that may Allah help us realize where our talents lies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Nyani, no, Nyamina West. Thank you very much, Ma. Uh, I equally want to join my colleagues. Uh, I came to this house um, one year, three months to by election, but in essence, I have also learned a lot through my colleagues. So, therefore, I owe them to say a big thanks to all my colleagues. And I'm praying that all of us come back here, come the sixth legislature. Um, we know the day is emotion emotional, as it is difficult to say goodbye. Uh, but like many of us alluded here, we are praying that all of us come back. Um, I will also plead to the government in response to the receipt we made uh, during the last budget session uh, in uh, analyzing the NDP it was made to known there that Nyamina is among the least developed constituency in the Gambia and that today most of the ministers are here present so I'll put it to them uh, this is in an event that or oh, as a result, uh, Nyamina, for the last 50 years, we were less privileged when it comes to government projects and then government development. Uh, we are not privileged with a major hospital or a major health center. We are not privileged to electricity. Um, just recent, uh, with the coming of this uh, government, that we register a project on water supply and then we also have some feeder roads that are being fixed by NEMA projects to the rice fields but still now there is a lot to be done in Nyamina West and I put uh, this to the ministers to please consider Nyamina West since as put uh, on the NDP we are the less developed as for now. Uh, in that juncture, I will just also uh, join my colleagues uh, on this day, since this is the last day for this session on the 
20, uh, or on the fifth legislature, and then I say a big thank you to a few of them who serve as mentor, uh, especially the majority, the minority, and few colleagues that were very close to me. That is Honorable Keba Jalo, um, and Honorable Sekuba Jaju. So, in essence, I don't want to keep long. I'll say thank you very much. Thank you very much, Saba Sanyal. It's a rule. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. <laughs> thank you for giving me the opportunity, Honorable Speaker. Yeah, um, equally, I will do the same. It's just a repetition in the starting. Um, first of all, I thank Allah for giving me the health, the well-being, and the power to participate and represent my people for the past five years. As many have said, it's a day of really reflection. We are reflecting on the <coughs> actions we have taken here, the challenges and the successes. But allow me, Madam Speaker, before going there, to thank my parents, my family, and my loved ones. On behalf of the people of Sabah Sanjal, I thank the entire Gambian people and equally thank the people of Sabah Sanjal for giving me the opportunity to represent them here in the past five years. I equally will challenge them and request them to re-elect me for the next coming five years. Madam Speaker, I thank the entire parliament. I don't want to segregate anybody here because everybody have really, really did well in this parliament. Starting from the cleaners, from the orderlies, the support clerks, the committee clerks, and everybody through the leadership of the Assembly Authority, the Office of the Clerk, and the Office of the Speaker. We have no other word than thank you, a big thank you to you all. Honorable Speaker, um, this is a hadith. If you don't thank somebody, you will not thank Allah. Therefore, as a Muslim, I thank all of you. And I started thanking Allah if I don't thank the people individually or in group, Allah will not recognize the thank I gave for him. Mr. Speaker, what I will reflect now is the tremendous development, the tremendous changes that the Gambia achieved during these five years. We all can recall that before these five years, in 2016 and beyond, we all know where the Gambia was and how Gambia was being governed. And we also know from that point today how the Gambia is governed. If you compare and contrast, we'll all understand or see that there is a very big development. In terms of human rights, Gambians have now seen themselves, they realize themselves, and they know their potentials. And that is why people were voting for changes. However, we cannot do everything at once because life is a continuous process. Our ancestors did their quarters and go, when rather, we will also do our quarter and go, and we will have successors who will continue from our stopping point. Uh, in that vein, I want to thank the entire executive through the leadership of his Ex Excellency Alaji Adama Barrow for having such a very formidable team who have foresight for the Gambia and initiated these laudable developments. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, I am giving a big thank to that executive and appeal to them to keep 
or challenge them to keep that spirit or redouble that spirit because Gambia is the only place we have. I also want to acknowledge the efforts <coughs> of the parliament in supporting the, the executive to pursue their, their, their activities, without which we could not have achieved such development. Specifically, Madam Speaker, if I come to Sabah Sanjal, Madam Speaker, Sabah Sanjal was, was in a situation <coughs> where some part of the communities are completely isolated and cannot go out anywhere. Today, that is a thing of the past. For over 57 years, we are under that situation. Today, you can go anywhere to the last person at the Pangane bus there. Somebody at the far corner in the, in the constituency can be reached within a very short time. That is a
what is the way forward for those projects? Because people really need them. In some countries, they have not done it for six months as of today. For six months, they will go out of their own community yeah. to another community of the water just to play. And we all believe that water is a human right. Allow us to have our right and in their place. Honorable Minister. Madam Speaker, with those few remarks, I thank you very much and I beg to take my seat. Thank you. Honorable Member for Janjambure. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for giving me the floor. <clears throat> uh, I want to seize this opportunity, first of all, to thank you at the head of the National Assembly, together with the clerk and the entire staff for the cooperation we had during the five years we spent here. And uh, I am unfortunately one of those who have declared that we are not coming back. Mm -hmm. And uh, Madam Speaker, I take this singular honor to thank you all for the cooperation, my colleagues. It had been sometimes bitter between us, but uh, we were able to so much. And uh, I hope and pray that for all of you who are preparing to come back, I pray that you win your constituencies and come back. And for the honorable member for Senekunda, who had been my head of delegation at the ACP EU, I say I'm very grateful. We had, had a lot of experience from you, and uh, you have been a very good head of delegation. And uh, I can tell that you had represented Gambia at, at this peak, because we were there, we saw it. We were with you. Uh, my next group of people I want to thank is my electorates. I want to say that I'm very grateful because I remember the day when they came for me to contest in the parliamentary elections. I told them that I'm not a politician. And I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't want to contest, but they insisted that I should. And uh, for those who I may not have uh, for those of, who were expecting more than what I did for them, if I have not satisfied them, I'm telling them that uh, that's, that's my best I was able to do. And for those who think I did better than all the members of uh, parliament who had ever served in Janjambore, I tell them, bravo. Well, this is what I could, this is what I did, and that's where I can stop. Madam Speaker, I just want to buttress on one thing. In, in Janjambore, there is a rice field that had been contracted out to a contractor by the Ministry of Agriculture. For the last four or five years, Madam Vice President, for the last four to five years, this rice field is not still completed. The work is still not completed. And uh, I would definitely have loved to see that completed is in tenure of my time, but it is not possible. So please put that into consideration. <coughs> and uh, because Tenjambore is very well known for rice production. And as, to, as, of, as, as of today, there is not a single rice field that is being cultivated. This is very sad. Uh, 
and my I hope that will be taken care of. And Mr. the Minister for Works, who is my personal friend, who was my personal co-worker at the Department of Water Resources, Mr. Bailamin Joe. We had worked together for over 20 years at the Water Resources. I, I have a, a road in Janjambore that he had promised that he was going to tar for us. And please, don't forget it because I'm not here. Uh, I seize this opportunity to thank all the, the members of all the committees I serve in the Additional Assembly, particularly the Agri Committee where I served as the chair. Uh, I'm very grateful to all the members who I think we had done a lot within these five years. And I want to thank the National Assembly once again, this group, for the 100 million that was given to the Ministry of Agriculture uh, in the 19, 2020. And uh, as the Minister has said it here, over and over, that has gone a long way in helping them to achieve bumper harvest that, that year. And uh, I, I hope during the next parliament, the Minister of Agriculture will be allocated enough funds. Madam Vice President, I have said it here before, that uh, this COVID, we, are, we have still not, we, do, we don't know still how effective it has affected those countries where these rice are grown from. And uh, probably that might be the cause why some of the, the essential commodities are getting more and more expensive. And uh, a lot of these things, from rice growing to vegetable growing, everything we can, we can be able to do it here and be self subsidized in it. But somehow we try to put this into projects and give it to people to execute them, and one way or the other they fail. So I, I hope the government would be would look into this seriously because a lot of women garden in the, in the provinces are without water currently and I think a uh, uh, member for Willie East had always been lamenting that uh, there is a garden in this constituency that has no water and uh, when it was added together I think there were 19 or 20 such gardens they were built by NEMA project, but there's no water supply system in them. And I, I hope the Minister of Finance, together with Agriculture, will sit down and look at this. Because even fencing those areas is a lot of money. So if you leave it like that without water supply, and it's being underutilized, then I don't think it, that's of great importance too. Uh, finally, I want to thank the executive. I had been seeing them here each time we meet, although certain times they fail, but they come certain times and we give them what we think. Please, like somebody said it here, we are not enemies, we are adversaries. We are all out to ensure that Gambia develops the way we want it. And uh, if we ask certain questions, and, uh, a lot, and a lot of times, even myself, I'm part of them who would think that the speaker is helping the ministers not to, not to answer our questions. But 
the idea of our asking questions is to make sure that the, 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 the minister concerned and the idea that is behind the whole thing is not being distorted by people outside. That's, that's why we insist sometimes to know some reasons why uh, ministers are not answering certain questions the way we think. So that being the case, I, 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 I will tell you I am among those people who are thinking that you are assisting to the ministers not to uh, answer the questions as they were. Nonetheless, this should not mean anything between us. We are all Gambians. I think every individual here has this intention that you want to see the Gambia go forward. That's our ultimate objective here. At the end of the day, like somebody was saying, the government failing. If government fails, you fail. If any government, even if you are dead opposition to everything the government does, which is not the case here. That's not the case here. How many times have we seen bills pass here? Please, not only this parliament, but even the next parliament coming, we should always be seeing Gambia as number one and not ourselves or our parties. And uh, on that note, I'll beg to sit, take my seat and I thank the entire country for giving us the support because each time you go out, people will say, oh, I saw you say this at the National Assembly. So if we had done good, bravo to us. If we had done good, we are telling those people that it is not it was not our, our, our intention to do bad. We had wanted to do good because we have this country's interest at heart. On that note, I take my Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, for giving me the floor. Uh, I also want to say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, uh, for serving for almost today my fifth year in the chambers. Uh, I said thank God to Allah. And for those who didn't reach up to today, they didn't do anything to Allah, but their times has come. This is why they have passed away. May God forgive them. Uh, Madam Speaker, I also have to say thank you very much for being with us for the past five years, being patient with us, being so steady during your time of session. And I also thank your staff also for assisting us. Whatever we request from them, they are always ready to assist us. Uh, Madam Speaker, here my fourth day of deliberating my speech, uh, I first spoke about my consequences of the harbor they are having on the side of the hippos. Today also, that's my end of my session. For the past years, uh, I have been appealing to wildlife and even the defense. Before going to Darfur, at least they try to reduce. I don't say they eradicate all the hippos or kill all the hippos, at least to reduce them. Without that, Madam Speaker, we cannot have self-food sufficiency. Hippos in our area, they are really harboring the farmers there, and they don't do it any, uh, at any time, but when the 
produce are already yet to be harvested. Expecting the next day you will go for harvesting, you will find all the hippos have already uh, taken all your rice, which uh, is a problem to the farmers and it's always a problem to us because all the time you expect a bumper harvest, the hippos will take it. Madam Speaker, uh, I cannot go further not to thank the Minister of Agriculture for assisting my communities for a lot of implements such as power tillers, rice tracers, rice harvesters, and even the tracing machines also. Alhamdulillah, uh, the Minister of Agriculture has really assisted my community on, in, on time, uh, in, in the side of the rice cultivation areas where they were able to get some implements for their productions. Uh, but Madam Speaker, I also thank the energy, at least for the electricity we are realizing now, at least 24 hours uh, of electricity, thank to energy on that board. Yet still, if they can remember, Madam Speaker, I was all the time talking about others because almost three quarters of my communities are not benefiting electricity. And there are areas where, you know, they are always closer to Senegal, and those border villages are all the time benefiting the uh, electricity. For them, they can just see the light, but they cannot use the, 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 the light. So because of that, I still appeal the energy minister to make a follow-up so that those areas at the border can also be connected just like we had the other uh, villages which are in my constituency. Uh, Madam Speaker, on the side of water, according to Saba Sanjal, I also had a similar thing. Boreholes had been drilled in my area for almost an year now, but yet still the borehole is not used. So I want the minister to set a light on that because they are really in need of water and it has been there for almost one and a half year. The borehole has been drilled, but they are not using it. So uh, the other side is about works. Uh, Madam Speaker, as far as works is concerned, in terms of road construction, these 400 kilometers we have been all the time saying in this chamber, none of my communities are benefiting it. There is no single uh, village which this road has come through. The only place maybe they may be saying is about Nyanga Bantang, and that place is just the road to reach at the village so that it can get access to the main road. But my community of Nyani are not benefiting that road. And there is no single road which the government has already stated in my communities which the roads uh, will benefit. So that was an year the head of state has went up to Dingirai through Ndaven, promised them that there will be a road through there, but yet still we didn't have that road construction. And even just of a recent, the minister was talking about this Baden Harden Highway Road uh, and other roads. But, Madam Speaker, my consequences are not benefiting in any of the. GSM is concerned. I have been saying that also for these past five years. But still now, most of my villages like Saramala and Faraba and Kataba and other areas <coughs> just uh, surround the Senegalese border, they are also having a lot of challenges to get access for telecommunication. There, if you want to hear from anybody, you have to hang your telephone on top of the tree so that you can get a telephone. And it's 
men is not safe. You can even try while listening, getting the, uh, the, com the, the telephone to get access to it. You may even fall down. So, Madam Speaker, I also have that challenges to, with, uh, with, my, with the communication system. The other also is about the health. I have also, I can say all this problem which have been stated here for the past five years, there is no single uh, problem which has been solved. In fact, one of the presidential tour, all my communities were complaining and their needs were have been set. Thank God I was there, I stood and I told them, here are the ministers. The messages you normally tell me, I always take, tell them in these chambers, but none of them has been solved. And up to now, we had a, a very good theater at Kuntaul Health Post, but that theater is not under use. And it's, I think it's the most sophisticated, well-equipped, well-spacious theater even in, in Cambodia, but it's not been used, it's underutilized. So the health minister, please help us so that that facility can be used. Just day before yesterday, one of my people has a problem with, sorry to say, a hernia. Before he reached here, he passed away. It was, uh, it was even yesterday, I made all efforts so that that guy can he turned back, but unfortunately he died. So, <clears throat> for that reason, and that facility is there, nobody is using it. So please, the health minister, we are appealing so that you can able to help us so that that health, post, that health center can be used. Uh, <clears throat> the other aspect is about, there is a camp at Sametenda. My colleagues is not here, but we join together because that's an association they call Nyani Sami Association, which they are making a follow-up so that that Aliski camp, where uh, it is located, is at Sami Tenda, to make it as a skill center. We are making a follow-up for it. We have even talked to the uh, Minister of Higher Education so that we can see how best we can able to get that facility so that it can be a, a skill center. Uh, the tourist sector is also trying all possible means so that they can get access to that facility so that they can make it a tourist camp. But according to the community, according to the association, and according to Nyani Sami, the vast majority, I can say, all concerned people are interested to be there as a ski center than uh, a tourist center. So for that, Madam Speaker, uh, Yes. So, Madam Speaker, I think these are the uh, information I wanted to share with you. Uh, here, we come back into politics. This year, we can say it's just at a close door to us. The campaign is coming to start, though we are coming to into nomination. But all what I can able to tell my colleagues is that Let's be mindful on abuse language. Let's know that here we all are the same family. We are all the same family. So based on that, let's try to keep peace. Peace is everything. Peace is the most needed thing what we can able to achieve. Without peace, there will be no peaceful development. So on that note, Madam Speaker, uh, I think these are the messages I wanted to say, but once again, I, as, as, I can only thank the Ministry of Agriculture for their effort, what they have done in my constituency. Other than that, other ministries, I'm still appealing to them so that they can also see what they can able to do for, the, for my constituency, because there are a lot to be done, especially on, in terms of uh, road, access road to other various villages, places like from Jakaba to Kayai, via Jarmakuta, Manna, then to Jarmakoto. 
and the other one at Dingirai, passing through Ndawen, go to Saramalo, to Kataba, back to Washu. So if these roads have been able to be constructed, I think it will be a free movement for us, and we can get access to the main hospital, that is the Kunta uh, uh, Hospital. So on that note, Madam Speaker, I beg to tell you. Thank you. Um, honorable member for Iliasa. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. May I say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Um, honorable members, there's a list of 31 honorable members who are there. And we are number 13. So let's exercise patience. Everybody is recorded. You'll all have an opportunity. Eh? Thank you. Thank you. May I say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. I thank the Almighty God and His Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I thank my mother, and my father. And also I thank the other constituency and our chairman and the chairwoman. I went back over. And also I thank my brother, Lamin Kanye, which all the time with me during the struggle. And I also thank the Speaker of the House, and also the Speaker of the House. And also I thank the late Lamin Damundiba, who built my school in the 60s, and who was among the struggles so that uh, the Gambia will achieve what they really want to themselves. Madam Speaker, when I had carefully, if you could believe with me, in the last five years, I was complaining about the from uh, the federal from 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 Williasa to Balengo. If you are German based, or even the uh, uh, parliamentary questions, but uh, it's very unfortunate. The music concern is not very much uh, care about it because. Uh, it's hard to say because he's not from that area. That's why he's not very much concerned about it. And also, Madam Speaker, you can also bear with me that uh, almost for the past three or four years, I was uh, complaining concerned about these uh, debate committees, just like uh, the rice. That uh, the duty on rice. We are not paying it. But uh, still now, there's no changes on the price on duties. And also, so many people are complaining the, 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 the price of the uh, rice, sugar, and all other things. And uh, there's nothing to blame customs. When I, go, when, uh, I had people blame that they're, they're blaming uh, customs officers. No. The customs officers, they have no hand. On these uh, uh, on duties, the Minister of Finance is responsible for all these things, in, of course, in this country. Because the Minister of Finance, he gives target to customs, and also Mr. Finance also gives them the uh, indicated value. I told him, that, I, I told him, Mr. Finance, that here, if you want this thing to be reduced, that there are two ways: either you revise indicated value, or you reduce the duties, so that at least. People able to buy, 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 buy the goods, so the, the, the price will go down. And also, how that the, 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 the pork also, they couldn't build. Because, I mean, if they revise the taxes, and if they revise also the, 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 the demurrages, they all do contribute uh, on, 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 on the price on the uh, base commodities. Madam Speaker, 
And uh, my, 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 I, I can only, I, let, me, let me thank the water resources, Madam Speaker, for the past 57 years. For the Timbian Cotton, over the Caribbean, there was no water. But now, I have about, almost about 90% of water in my constituency. For that being the case, I thank my chairman, Mama Lyman Bojam, and also my councillors, Sambonjai and Tumani, for their cooperation during this process. And also I thank Nyas, Nyakasi, and Jabi and his and water resources. Madam Speaker, in my constituencies, I've been saying that place like Nokunda World, it's a big world. But still now, there's no health facilities. The, 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 the hospital is in that, in that place. And that world, there's no single health center. And that's one of the most serious things. Kubandara is a big, big world. And they are a little bit far from Parafeni. And at least, uh, I was spoken to the, um, the, 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 the health minister, so that at least they can have a small I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, health center so that uh, they'll be able to they, they, they can they take care of the, the, I mean, the, 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 the women when they're on the, they the label before taking them to California. And also, Madam Speaker, the, uh, the, I think the, 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 the minister, the minister of Interior here, I have told him about the you know, Iliasa police post. Elaza is a very is, is, is a very sensitive area, and also is within the, we are not far from the from the border. And if there's a you know, you know, police I mean, you know, police post there, that's going to help the, the community so that uh, they will prevent from these uh, so many uh, I mean I mean the problems within 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 the area. Madam Speaker, okay, just okay. Madam Speaker. I think uh, it's very sad, Madam Speaker. For the past five years, all the report has been done here. But the, but, but the Parliament didn't do anything about it. We have already report on 2017, up to date. There's no has been done on it. And if you see the corruption within the civil service now, it's just rampant. Why? Because, because the, the, the people responsible, they don't even care to audit, uh, to, 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 audit uh, to, to act on audit, on, on, on audit report, on, on, on audit report. So we well, everybody, I mean, we can't give you, we can say, you know, we are in a free society. Then you can do anything you like, because you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are not being punished by, 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 by what, what you this, which is not at, 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 at the mutual level. Madam Speaker, the only thing we can do, Madam Speaker, in this country, we need to change our attitude, Madam Speaker. That the only thing, if we change our attitude, that, that, that's going to help us so that we can be more productive in this country. But Madam Speaker, I mean, I mean, when, when I visit Jagar Pacha, and also, I mean, Surma Sambokoy, we have enough, there, there are enough water, we have, we have enough land and there are natural resources we can even develop this country without even, without even importing rice. But no. I'm sorry to say, the authorities, most of them, they are, 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 are self-centered. Because the amount of money, the amount of, the amount of money pumped in, 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 in agriculture that can also divide this country if people are, if, if are sensitive to each other. But no. If you see, if you, I mean, uh, if you see, if, 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 I agree with the, 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 the member of Jinjambure. The land of Jinjambure itself can, can feed the whole country, Sarah, if you are committed. But you know, but, 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 but that's not, that, that doesn't go on. And even this, you were know, saying about, about this, uh, about this, this, uh, hundred million dollars. This hundred million dollars, this hundred million dollars, the, the, the way and money has been distributed within society, it was even wrong. We are thinking about uh, mechanized family. But we are, we are doing that, we are going to give uh, dengue to, I mean, a dengue or to, to, to a farmer. How can that, how can, I mean, this old, old I mean, uh, the Asian, Asian farming. No, no, no. But you want, you want, you want, I mean, make an farm so that at least we're able to, I mean, produce as much as you can do, if you are committed. Madam Speaker. Okay. 
Okay, now the chance to my speaker. Honest speaker, it is high time now. The Uganda government, let's take a high step now against the Senegal government. Because Senegal government, they're flattening the log of transit trade, thinking about our customers, instead of what's on the Kasu. If we can for the past three years, there are so many, I mean, I mean thousands of containers. We are, we are coming from uh, Guinea Bissau and our uh, customers, but now they block it. There's no more transit trade in this country. And they abuse and they, and they dishonor the, 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 the equal policy. And the government, they are, they are out of it. They don't say anything about it. So that being the case, we are now going towards election. I am warning. A serious warning. This election is for governments only. It is only, it is government only. I am warning my, my, my fellow brothers, if I'm a government, don't postpone this election. Especially my consequences, you have consequences. I'll make for a protocol. If I'm a government, if you want to import if you want to import in the elephant, then you can you can you can you can you can't, you can't see anything you, you, you want. Because this this election is quite different from the present election, Madam Speaker. Let's push for the state. That means the reason for for that means given the speaker, thank you very much, even flow. Thank you, honorable members. I think this is a convenient time for us to take a break. Yes, for maybe we we come back at four o'clock. Yes, it's quarter to three, so that we can freshen up. We've been sitting down since morning, After so we we'll just sustain the sitting till four o'clock. We will resume at four p.m. Half, please, Madam Speaker. Half past three, please. Half past three p.m. Half three thirty p.m. Yes, yeah, so I preside today. Uh, um, the, so maybe some of the honourable ministers may wish to go and sign, um, take care of some official matters in the office. So let's come back at four o'clock. Let's also be considerate. We're partners, as we always say. Thank you. So the sitting is suspended. We'll resume at four o'clock. Thank you. You can have your lunch.